Okay, so I'm gonna show you all how to build this awesome little bookshelf for your kid's room or a playroom or pretty much anywhere in your house that you've got a wall. And the thing that makes this one really great is it's super slim. It's not, it doesn't stick out very far from the wall, four inches. Um, and uh, it's, it's fairly short, so kids can grab books off of this and put them back. Um, and uh, it's really safe. So you've got this bar up top. It allows you to secure it to the wall really solid, so it's not gonna fall over or tip. Um, so stick around and I'll show you how to build this. If you could give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell icon if you wanna get notifications when I have more videos, um, that'd be great. So uh, let's get to building this thing. So you'll need a couple tools for this build, a jigsaw, skill saw, measuring tape pencil. I use an air nailer and a drill and some clamps. I also use three quarter inch plywood and half inch plywood. This is birch. So first, we gotta clean up our crap. This is the stuff that makes it really easy to cut plywood in your garage, even if you don't have a workbench. Hit that thumbs up for Dad Socks, people! So when you do this part, you gotta make sure your battery is taken out of your skill saw. If it's cordless, if it's corded, unplug it. But what we wanna do is we wanna figure out the distance between the blade and the guard. So mine is an inch and a half. So what I wanna do is when I make my measurements on my wood, I need to make sure that I add an inch and a half to the measurement so that it accounts for the guard because I'm gonna be setting up my wood guide that I'll show you in a second up against my guard and not up against my blade. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we're cutting the four inch piece first and we're gonna mark it at five and a half inches because the guide on my saw is an inch and a half longer. So we just need to add an inch and a half to the measurement. I am using some dumbbells to hold down my guide piece and my shot vac to suck up any dust. Now I need two of these four inch pieces and then the third piece is gonna be Okay, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I've got this half inch birch plywood scrap that was left over for another project. So I'm gonna use this for the shelving portion, but I'm gonna show y'all how to uh, cut this with a skill saw if you don't have a miter saw. So my uh, cousin Frank came over and took a look at the work I was doing. I always like when he shows up, but man, he always comes over and doesn't ever do anything. What a lazy piece of shit. So if you stack all of your pieces on top of each other and you also include a piece of sacrificial board underneath, it'll eliminate almost all tear out and it'll give you really clean cuts on almost any type of wood. So just a quick little tip for you. Now if you're cutting the angled portion with a skill saw, uh, one of the things you can do is you can clamp your two pieces together so that when you get finished you'll have the same angle on both pieces and you're not trying to match anything. Uh, this is just an example because I will use my miter saw to cut this angle. I also decided after seeing the sample piece I cut that I want an inch squared off piece instead of just a, a sharp angle all the way to the top. 
And for the bottom piece that pulls away from the baseboard, this is where the baseboard will sit. Um, I just decided to do kind of this angled design. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I just wanted to look a little bit better. And uh, I used the hole saw and then my jigsaw to complete that. This is where you'll make that adjustment if you have taller baseboards. So make sure that your measurement matches how tall your baseboard is. And I would probably add a quarter of an inch or a half an inch so that it clears it really, really well. Okay, so this is what you're going to need. Uh, you'll see I only have three shelf base uh, here in the picture, but I needed four. And the shelf stop and the wall mount boards I ripped down to two and a half inches instead of four. So um, just a little adjustment and then it turned out perfect. Okay, so you can attach this many different ways, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm, I've got the back of the bookcase up against this piece of plywood. Now, this piece of plywood is only meant to keep things nice and square. So, what I'm going to do is the marks we just marked, I'm going to line up the bottom of the shelf to the bottom of that line. So, right here, we'll line that up, we'll glue it and I'm gonna nail it. So I'm gonna use two and a quarter inch nails, these are the wrong ones, um, and nail it from the back side. Now I'll end up with nail holes, but I'm not worried about that, I'll just fill them. So the stuff from the big box stores will have kind of an unfinished side. You can see where it's laminated together. Those are two separate pieces, but on the other side it's one full sheet of birch. So I'll do the pretty side up. So the only thing to keep in mind here is make sure you guys get enough glue on the piece so you get some squeeze out. And uh, when you're nailing these together, with an, especially with the nailer, you want to make sure that the pieces are flush against the back, which is why we have that piece of plywood there to keep everything nice and straight. Um, and also make sure that it's, uh, it's perpendicular to the board you're nailing to. All right, so I'm switching from the two and a quarter inch screws down to the one and a quarter inch screws so that I don't blow through this half inch plywood. Okay, so it's really important to keep this mount piece flush against the plywood because this is what is going to be mounting the thing to the wall. So just try to get it as flush as possible and you'll be good to go.
Okay, so all we need to do is make sure it's really secure down at the bottom, which I've already done. It's all the way against the wall. And I just need to find out where my studs are. Now, I had to cut this little recess in the piece here so that it would fit around my little wainscoting or molding or whatever you want to call that. Um, so if you'll have any of that in your house or say you have higher baseboards, you need to make sure you account for that when you're building this thing. So let's get this thing mounted to the wall. And I'm using just a basic two and a half inch interior screw. I do like to use the T25 screws so that uh, your bits don't strip out. Okay, that's it. It only needs one screw because it weighs nothing. So uh, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, just as a reminder, if y'all could give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you want to see more. Um, and leave me a comment if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.